we're good, good to go. Welcome, everybody. Um, welcome to this Unity Days Action Committee meeting and a briefing by our city manager, Teron Richardson, and our police chief, Rochelle Brackney. My name is Brian Wheeler. I'm the director of communications for the city. And along with uh, Charlene Green, I've been working with my team and uh, other staff facilitating this first year's Unity Days program. Unity Days was approved by city council in February, and it's a city-sponsored and community-driven uh, series of more than 80 events. Our goal has been to educate, inspire, and honor people in our community as we work towards economic and racial justice. Now, every two weeks since March, we've been meeting usually here as a committee. And uh, tonight at the start of the me meeting, many of our committee members are out in the audience. Um, and I, I would like you guys to raise your hand so people can see that you're on the action committee. So you can see that's a good part of the audience. I want to thank them for volunteering all their time and uh, all the work that they've done to create and champion many of the programs that have been happening since May and they're going to go throughout August. Um, so that's been a lot of work and we greatly appreciate everything they've done. Before I turn it over to Teron Richardson, I want to share you a few thoughts about the format for tonight. We're here to answer your questions about Unity Days and the public safety plans. And uh, the committee uh, thought a press conference and a Q&A session would be a good idea. And so we were uh, happy to help, help make that happen. Some of you may have questions. Uh, the media, members of the community, may have questions best answered by members of the committee. So we want to make sure that uh, they feel comfortable and available to uh, just stand up and not be bashful. They haven't been bashful since March, so <laughs> I, I know they won't be tonight. Uh, but we do have a microphone over there. If the people who want to ask questions, unless you're a reporter uh, tethered to your camera, if you could go to the microphone, that would be great, because then we can capture that audio. After the remarks by our city manager, uh, the chief, and myself will share a few thoughts I'll talk about the schedule of upcoming events, and the chief will talk about uh, public safety. And this is a presentation that we plan to repeat in one week. So we'll, we will be back here at 6 o'clock next Wednesday, August 7th, uh, to do this again and make sure any community members who want to participate and come ask us questions about uh, what's coming up this next month will be here to answer those questions. So with that, I'll turn it over to our city manager, Teron Richardson. Thank you, Brian. Uh, and thank all of you for all of your time, participation, energy, and making Unity Days what it is. Uh, what I want to say uh, to the public is that we wanted to have these uh, uh, question and answer sessions uh, as well as give presentations about what Unity Days is all about. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that the community knew exactly what we're doing and how we're trying to do it this year and continue to enhance uh, Unity Days moving forward. Uh, as many of you uh, have taken part in uh, many of the events that we've had, as was mentioned, uh, since the May time frame, uh, which over this period of time, or what, 80 events mm -hmm. uh, that will take place throughout that, th throughout that uh, duration of time that I have mentioned. Uh, but more so, uh, I wanted to uh, make sure we have these sessions, as you said, tonight as well as next week, we'll be doing the same thing but to be able to provide some in insight to our programs that are going to take place between August 10th through August 12th. And I want to ensure you uh, that we will have a safe and enjoyable time uh, over uh, those uh, couple of days that weekend. Um, but more so, um, uh, we have worked together with staff to make sure uh, that we've done our due diligence in terms of making sure of that. Um, and I don't want to belabor the point. Uh, I know that uh, everyone has something to do on this nice rainy day. So <laughs> I'll move on and I'll uh, pass it over to uh, our uh, police chief. Thank you. Um, thank you. Welcome. Um, thank you for the opportunity to sit in front of you to at least answer some of your questions um, and also more importantly for taking the lead um, on the Unity Days initiatives. Although it may have been put into effect by a statute or an ordinance more specifically, it really is this community that has moved forward with it and taken something was a very small idea, um, the attempts to reclaim 
um, what Charlottesville looked like and then fashioned and informed it in a way that really spoke to um, this community in a genuine and meaningful way. Um, so we appreciate that opportunity. We also appreciate that you've given us the opportunity to support you in the way that you need and must be supported throughout not only just August, but the May events, the June events or July events um, when things were going on, and even following into September um, as we try to round this out with um, our Seaville Night Out um, as a really a celebration of this community coming together after an entire summer. So we look forward to continued engagement. We um, appreciate the dialogue, but more importantly, we appreciate you picking up the mantle and moving forward with these initiatives um, and allowing us to support you in that way. So thank you. So just a quick update on the calendar as we head into August. On uh, Friday, August 9th, uh, we're in full support of Fridays After Five occurring as it normally would. So that's the expectation on August 9th. And, and many of you know that the past two years, we've not been able to have Fridays After Five heading into this weekend. So we're, we're glad that's on schedule and fully programmed. We've got a, a ballet performance that'll be taking place right outside this building on the mall. That'll be at, uh, uh, I think, about 5.30 on Friday night. Uh, so those are the two things that we want to draw your attention to for Friday. On Saturday, August 10th, that'll start with a Quaker worship service in Market Street Park. Right now, that's scheduled for 9 a.m. Uh, that may shift to an earlier time slot. So with all these events, we ask you to watch the Unity, Unity Days calendar on the city website to make sure you've got the exact time and locations. Uh, there will be a brass ensemble in Market Street Park at about 11 a.m. on that uh, Saturday, August 10th. We've been doing the Monticello to Main Street tour throughout the summer. That's going to happen again at 11 a.m. Starts at Court Square. Um, following the brass ensemble, First United Methodist Church will also have a reception, and there'll be more details about that on the website. Film screenings, interactive art at Central Place on the Downtown Mall, all of those activities happening morning and afternoon, driving into the Seaville Singout, which will be at 4 o'clock in the pavilion. The Seaville Singout was done last year at uh, Mount Zion Church, and it's going to be even bigger this year, so they need a bigger venue. Uh, so the pavilion is working with us to host that event. Um, so that's what we have on deck for Saturday. And again, these are all events that came in front of the 19 members of our Citizen Action Committee and um, were proposed and that they vetted. And uh, in many cases, they, they championed. Some of these events were championed by members of the committee. On Sunday, August 11th, there will be an event on the steps of the First United Methodist Church at 7 a.m., Conversations on Biblical Idols. Um, Sunday's big event from 1 to 5 in Market Street Park is our Call to Action Resource Fair. Uh, the committee wanted to make sure to equip community members with action-oriented things they could do to make this community better. So we're going to fill the park with uh, tents and organizations that are intended to help us do that. Um, and we'll be glad to share that list with you heading in to the weekend. But um, we've got 18, 19 different groups that will all be there uh, showcasing their talents and sharing information so the community members can take action in a multitude of different ways. Then Monday, August 12th, um, the 4th Street crossing will be closed. In fact, it will be closed throughout the weekend along with 2nd Street. Uh, but we wanted to make sure that space was available to the community for solemn remembrance um, of what happened two years ago. Um, so that, that will certainly be done on August 12th. And the clergy collective will have an interfaith service that evening at First Baptist Church on West Main Street at 7 p.m. Those are the main events. Uh, there are other things on the calendar that I would draw your attention to. And um, then the committee was so excited about keeping this going in August that we also programmed some things the next weekend. So Saturday, August 17th, um, there's a back to school bash. That's not a Unity Days event, but it's an important, important community event at the pavilion. And piggybacking on that, uh, Rosia Parker championed an idea of having a community block party at Washington Park. Uh, so that'll be on Saturday afternoon from 1 to 5 at Washington Park on the 17th. And then Sunday, August 18th, there will be a concert at Tonsler Park uh, from 1 o'clock in the afternoon till 9 p.m. 
Uh, so that'll be one of the big events at the end of uh, Unity Days in August. There are some other events, films, and other things happening later in the month. Again, check out the calendar, but that's a, a sort of summary of what this community said it wanted uh, to have as we observe uh, the second year since 2017. So with that understanding of what's happening, I'm going to go back to the chief and just let her give you a sense of, of how then we're preparing uh, to keep everyone safe. So thank you. So when we think about um, safety and planning, if you remember last year, I talked a lot about balancing your access and your convenience with your safety and your security. This year, because the um, events and venues are spread throughout the city, we're going to have to take a very different approach um, versus the type of approach we had last year when it was um, very targeted towards the pedestrian mall area and to the parks. So what our approach this year is, it's a very nimble, very soft presence, um, and we're using something very similar to the style that we used um, and was very effective during the NCAA um, Final Four and Championship Games. You'll see lots of officers on bicycles, um, on foot and on motorcycles so that they can interact with you in a very meaningful and a very personal way, um, encouraging people to participate in the Unity Day events. Um, they'll be acting as your ambassadors, but knowing that we are also nimbly prepared that throughout the region, if there is something that goes on in the region, that we will be able to respond um, and help our partners who have always helped us over the last years as well. Um, we have um, working continually with UVA um, and the state police and Albemarle. Um, and then actually some of our local colleges have offered to send their bicycle officers up to us again to help support us um, as they did during the NCAA. So that's, a, you'll see a much softer um, presence that's very nimble, very interactive, very friendly, um, also always maintaining um, their vigilance and so that we can be prepared for any incidents that may occur anywhere throughout the city, um, surely understanding that our ultimate goal and as we release is to support the Unity Day Committee and the city's approach to how you reclaim um, the marking of the events of August of 2017. Great. We would like your questions now. And if you would, go up to the microphone. Unless you're a journalist, you need to yell it out from where you are. <laughs> Annie. Great question. So the process for special event applications was very different this year. And the main reason for that was City Council, when they approved Unity Days as a community event, that reserved the downtown parks for Unity Days activities uh, during this weekend of August 10th, 11th, and 12th. So there, it turns out there were no other applications submitted uh, to use downtown parks. And uh, the only ones that were were those submitted on behalf of the committee. So in, in the case of um, you know, doing something on the downtown mall, putting up a tent in central space, central place, for example, that was a permit that I submitted on behalf of the committee to make sure we could support that activity. Val, yep. Matthew. What kind of uh, presence and role will the Virginia State Police be taking this year? I understand that they are also going to be present, um, and so wondering what the coordination is with them and what their uh, role and actions will be. So um, the State Police are always present with any of these events, much like UVA and Albemarle, um, but also, too, the exact same thing, um, a very nimble, um, behind-the-scenes present versus a forward-facing one, um, with the exception of like their bicycle and motorcycle officers as well, um, as we're working again towards that same um, philosophy. Are you able to share how many state troopers are expected to be in Charlottesville that weekend? Um, you know I'm not gonna share that number, <laughs> but um, just know that we are, 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 are extremely, like I said before, a nimble, responsive, flexible group um, and I'm sure that those numbers will always, someone will ask for those later. 
Um, but there was never we would do any pre-planning um, and reveal any of our um, law enforcement planning or any of our other types of plans that could create more vulnerabilities for this community um, than we would already have. And I would just add, Matthew, one of the things we did share in the press release about the public safety information yesterday was that the, the needs are much different this year. So with respect to street closures, mm -hmm. it's a focus on three sides of Market Street Park and the two crossings of the downtown mall. So that's a, a much different uh, setup than what was uh, undertaken last year. So with the exception, I don't know if there's any events that you must purchase a ticket for, but um, for the Uni Days events, the ballets, the brass ensemble, and things of that nature, um, because the city has taken this over as a special events permit, um, they're the ones who have set up the parameters, and it's an open access, open public um, venues. So they're, again, once more, we're not facing the having to set up perimeters and the type of screenings that we faced last year. So. Um, there should not be any additional screenings. Um, there are also, at all times, the type of um, enforcement of um, illegal activities that would occur if this was not a special event, but there is no additional screening processes. There are no additional entrance and exits because these are all over the city and not um, consolidated to a small or confined area. Yeah, thank uh, Tom Tom Festival. Thank. Fridays after five. So the, the private events at the Sprint Pavilion um, will have a check-in just like they do for a Fridays after five concert. So that would be for the Seville Singout. Annie. So we announced that second will be closed. Um, if we're thinking really much of a um, using all of the city spaces and allowing people to come down and enjoy the amenities of it, we're just going to make it a pedestrian style, pedestrian friendly, family friendly event. So just closing those streets off allow people to do that um, very comfortably and very freely. And one of the advantages of closing Second Street is we've got a great uh, photo exhibit up on the side of Violet Crown that was a Unity Days project, and that'll allow people to gather on Second Street and take in all that photography. Other questions? Yes, Alice. So you still always operate under a unified command because it is a regional event um, regardless. So we still have very close communications, um, clearly identified who we contact, you know, in terms of policy persons, those people who we may need to leverage around policy, um, as well as the heads of the agencies. Um, and I am very much embedded in that process. So yes, we were operating under the exact same format for us. Um, as we have in the previous year. And uh, I'll, I'll be one of the public information officers for that weekend, as will Tyler Hahn with the Charlottesville Police Department. Uh, so we'll definitely be available to the media. This may be something for a committee member, but um, one of the other big differences with last year and this year is there's going to be a lot of activity happening in Market Street Park, and it looks like they deliberately wanted to have some things happening there. Could one of them speak about the importance of having part of Unity Day take place in that park? Do we have a volunteer? <laughs> you might sum it up. <laughs> we, we might have multiple volunteers here. I see Don heading to the mic. Henry's ready. Yeah. 
Well, in terms of that, um, the committee and the community itself felt that it was very, very much imperative that we uh, reclaim that space and, uh, and, 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 and try to lay some peace and harmony where so much damage was done. Um, so we, 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 we were very uh, particular about the events that go in there and um, what they would represent and how they would look to the community. So yeah, it was, uh, I, I can't say that we came into the planning with that in mind, but as the, um, as the planning began to manifest itself, it, it became very obvious and apparent that we, we needed to plan something of substance in that, in that particular space. Henry? So part of our mandate as a committee was to celebrate unity um, in the space where unity was, more, was most egregiously violated. Um, but another part of our mandate as a committee was to expand unity, so uh, to, to propagate it, to make it to make it grow. Um, and I think the events that are planned in, the, in Market Street Park um, should be designed around that. Those of us who attend the First United Methodist Church, Market Street Park is our front yard. And so we really experienced the dissonance two years ago. And so that is why we are planning a residence event. Do you want to expand on that a little bit? Well, from I started planning this event uh, in 2017. I'm sorry, my mother just passed away. But it was it was my thought that we needed to bring resonance to Charlottesville, and we tried to plan the, the brass event. The tr we're having trombonists come from all over the state to bring resonance to the park. And we're gonna have things where people are singing together to, to allow them not just to be listeners or an audience, that, but to participate in group resonance. And we wanted to make it the exact opposite of what happened in 2017. That was our goal in planning it. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. And I'm already thinking, you know, we need to have a follow-up event on All Souls Day. So <laughs> I've started writing up the application, Sounds but good. I hadn't gotten it to them yet. But you know, and, that and seems like an appropriate. And uh, one of your singers is gonna be Uriah Fields, right? He's not only, so Uriah Fields was one of the original organizers of the Montgomery bus boycott in 1955. And he's going to be speaking, and he's going to be singing. And I ran into him in the Charlottesville airport. We were both headed out of town, and we just hit it together. And I said, man, i got to get this guy together with my trombone group. And uh, that's how that came about. And I, I feel blessed to have gotten to know Uriah a little bit and uh, look forward to hearing him more and hearing what he has to say. Thank you. Can you say your full name? I'm not sure if you did at the beginning or not. My name is Robert Graham. Mm -hmm. And also we'll have refreshments in the church after the event. And it will be air conditioned. <laughs> 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 but, and we're having, uh, we are having water for people out in the park. So to obviate any problems with heat for that community. Thank you. Yeah. We're excited to hear your event. <laughs> <laughs> any more questions?
want to take the yeah. so um <coughs> last year in order to at least try to access some of the state's funding for um, state of emergencies you have to declare that and then it also has to be declared through the state um, and I'm not sure and Leslie's here um, on were we able to recover anything but typically what they do is they set that money aside and it's actually the state police who recover first um, and if we have a surplus at all they typically deny giving us any of those resources back um, so oftentimes uh, we do not have the ability to access those resources. Currently, um, there is nothing that we can see that um, would, and, and Dr. Richardson would be able to speak a little bit more about it since he's one of the ones that would have to work with that with um, our council and our personnel. There's nothing that we could see that would help or would put us in that state. Again, I think the entire, um, the city and the state and even the nation is looking towards us to reclaim these spaces to at least allow them the opportunities to do that in their own communities as well because there are other communities who are experiencing now um, monthly the things that we were experiencing in 2017. And, and last year again the footprint of the uh, operation was so much bigger and the state of emergency w w was clearly needed and to support a lot of the street closures that, that were happening downtown, and, and that's just not needed this year. So that's good news. Um, again, as far as funding, the two things I would say. One of the great things City, <coughs> City Council did was support the Unity Days Action Committee with a $100,000 uh, allocation, and it's those funds that have been used to support um, all these events that you've been hearing about, and also the marketing and, and publicity. Uh, related work. Uh, the marketing group has been a great subcommittee that's uh, really helped guide uh, the branding of this event and we know that's going to get uh, even better in, in future years now that we've been uh, through this first year of Unity Days. And then um, as far as other department departments, you know, I think it's sort of, you know, we built in expectations in departmental budgets for uh, this time of year. And so some of that was built into budgets and then certainly um, Leslie can fill you in after, afterwards on any other things I'm leaving out. <laughs> Great. Well, I, I told the committee we would, we would get back to business, so I don't want to ask my boss to leave. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Teron, anything you want to finish up with? No, I just once again was, okay. okay. Oh, um, Two years ago, um, through the efforts of many, uh, the, the plans were very obvious as to um, what the group that came here intended to do. We're just wondering if, if there have been any pickups of any direct threats or any, any of that chatter that we've latched on to this year that, um, that we, we need to, if not be aware of, at least be wary of. So as you know, my approach last year was, as I said, that if we heard any of those kinds of things, if there were the necessity, um, that we would reach out particularly to those targeted or vulnerable populations. Um, I had a liaison, if you remember, with the vulnerable population communities, um, particularly those ones who are often targeted either through internet, um, leafleting, door-to-door, uh, -door, just displays <coughs> and things like that. And we have not experienced that. and. Um, you know, prayerfully we continue to operate with that same type of vigilance that we are always scouring and, and mining without releasing some of our sources and methods by which we continue to do that. But if there were any populations that were in danger, uh, we would have definitely pushed that out to those groups by now, um, and they would have been informed um, as well. So always making sure, know that we're always continuing to be vigilant for you and on your behalf. Um, and we'll continue to do so, not only through the, the, the Unity Days events, but even moving forward, knowing that Charlottesville every single day is on some national media outlet. And if you see something, say something. You know, la last year we reminded the community of that. If you see something on social media, in email, please forward it to us. Um, you can send it straight to me, and I'll make sure that the right people receive it. 
In closing, I'd like to say thank you, uh, Brian, uh, for all your attention uh, to um, our public awareness. Uh, thank you, Chief, uh, for ensuring that our public and those who visit our community are safe uh, throughout that weekend uh, because this weekend it'll be full of uh, uh, events to educate, inspire, uh, as well as to honor people in our community uh, to move forward uh, to, towards uh, economic and racial justice. So I'd like to thank the Planning Committee for all that you have done uh, and uh, continue to do in our community because uh, without you, we wouldn't be where we are today. Uh, and to have a great place to live, the city of Charlottesville. So thank you all, and thank you, staff, for all your time and due diligence once again. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Go for it again.